This is the red line. Here is Guyana. And the only thing I think I can say for sure about it is that the more you dig, the more complicated Guyana gets. Guyana is an English-speaking nation. The population split roughly in half between Indian-descended and African-descended. You can find it on the north coast of South America, bordering Suriname, Brazil, and Venezuela. And whilst the nation is roughly the size of the United Kingdom, its population is smaller than the island of Fiji. Even the Guyanese identity is wildly different from their neighbours. While Venezuelans and Brazilians usually proudly identify themselves as Latin American, Guyanese often identify themselves as Caribbean, and associate more closely with nations like Trinidad and Barbados. And although we may not have been paying much attention to the country, other actors certainly have been. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union maintained close relations with Guyana, and today, the biggest Russian embassy in all of Latin America is housed right here in the small capital of Georgetown. For decades, Russia has seen the value Guyana held in the region, and now India and China are also seeing that value, ramping up their investments and involvement with the nation in recent years. Guyana is not only rich in minerals like oil and aluminium, much of which is traded with Russia and China today, but Guyana also has another resource not often found these days. Empty, covered space. Areas that are out of sight for most satellite photos because of the dense canopy in the southern rainforests. And there is more than enough space to hide whatever you need out there. Although Guyana's population is 700,000, almost 400,000 live in this area. The rest of the country is incredibly sparsely populated. In fact, much of the area down here is still yet to be explored by humans to this day. And there is only a single highway connecting most of the nation's major cities. The least populated area though is here in the west, bordering with Venezuela. The Guyanese have purposely limited their growth in this area with the intention of preventing a full-scale war. You see, this area in Venezuela is known as the Essequibo. If you ask a Venezuelan nationalist, they'll tell you it rightfully belongs to Venezuela. This stems back to the 19th century. You see, at the height of Gran Colombia, when this and many other areas of Latin America were ruled from Bogota. When Gran Colombia fell apart into four nations, being Ecuador, Colombia, Panama, and Venezuela, the British snapped up this part of the jungle. And ever since then, Essequibo had been administrated by the Guyanese. So Venezuela wants to use the Gran Colombian map, and Guyana wants to use the British map. For a long time, Venezuela was a powerhouse of the region, with a grand army and a well-funded air force, and one of the larger navies in the Caribbean. They proclaimed on a number of occasions that they would reclaim the western part of Guyana. And with the disparity, Georgetown knew it would never be able to win a war with Venezuela. And so they developed a defensive position known as strategic depth. To this day, there is not even a single road that connects Georgetown to Venezuela. In fact, in this half of the country, there is almost no major infrastructure to speak of, which means in the event of a conflict, pushing tanks, trucks, or anything through would be nearly impossible because of how dense the rainforests in Guyana are. This leaves Venezuela with only two options. First, a naval invasion, which would be opposed by the Caribbean nations that Venezuela would have to travel through, who are more closely aligned with Guyana and the United States. The second option would be to travel south and invade through Brazil. But Brazil would never let that happen. Brazil uses Guyanese roads to transport goods from the Amazonas region through to the Caribbean, and also has frozen border disputes of its own with almost all of its neighbors. Brazil is in no hurry to open up the conversation of redrawing Latin American borders, and will be strongly opposed to anyone trying to do so. As we speak, the two nations are fighting in the international courts to get a final decision on the borders, with the winner of which being control of much of the oil just off the northwest coast of Guyana, oil which Russia, China, and the US. The verdict of this decision will come down from the court in a few years, but even then, it is unlikely that either side will ever back down. 
as Venezuela is likely to lose the case and doesn't want to give up their claims on a large chunk of territory. And Guyana can never accept that decision as their only real defense against Venezuela is the 200 kilometers of thick, impassable jungle separating the small population of Georgetown from the threat of Venezuelan tanks. If you want to hear our full 90 minute discussion on Guyana, how their elections were rigged by foreign powers, and how there may be missiles hidden in the southern jungles, check out our full piece by clicking here. Or you can subscribe, stay up to date with our videos, and help support the channel by clicking here. Thank you.